Hi everybody, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, my name's Michael Dunnett, uh, joining from the Tides TV team here today at Informa. I'm joined by Chris Romback, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Asahi Kasei Bioprocess, who is going to talk to us about the company's views on the trends in the oligo manufacturing industry. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. Fantastic to have you. So let's dive right in. First question for you, Chris. Uh, when we think about the future of oligonucleotide vaccine and therapeutic development, what are some of the near term trends to follow or challenges that would need to be addressed to find success? Yeah, Michael, I think, you know, in, in the near term, the biggest challenge is, is finding manufacturing capacity. There's been ex explosive growth in the market and, and there's little capacity. So there's going to be a pinch for availability over the next few years. Today, it's estimated that 10% of all future drug approvals will be oligo-based, so it's going to be a large number. And to develop continued success, the oligo industry can look to insights uh, from the biologics production uh, space, which had similar issues back in the 90s and early 2000s. Innovation at every level is going to be key for this modality to succeed, and the transition to larger scale production will rely heavily on companies' abilities to scale their processes. You, you mentioned scaling up there. Um, what is it that's important here? You know, what do relatively small operations need to focus on when ramping up manufacturing? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the very first area of focus that should be on finding the right partners, choosing the right advisors and consultants. Uh, this is a new modality, so there's not a lot of expertise out there. So you've got to work hard to find the right people, find the right CMO partners. And of course, you've got to find the right equipment providers. Uh, and these are all key points that I, I'd like to stress. A tremendous advantage our customers enjoy is the near flawless scaling of our synthesis systems, especially our columns. So understanding the criticality of scaling the synthesis column will help to assure that they're getting the same purity level and coupling efficiency from development scale to GMP production. And lastly, it's, it's important for the equipment selected to be easy to clean and to maintain as it's going to go through a large number of cycles per year. So can we can we dig a bit more into sustainability? You know, what are some of the key considerations with oligo manufacturing specifically, as opposed to other modalities? What are some of the biggest hurdles to achieve more sustainable practices? Yeah, you know, I'm personally excited that this subject now is a frequent part of our conversations uh, with our customers today. And I think one of the biggest differences is that oligos are chemically synthesized rather than cultured as monoclonal antibodies are. So the process uses a variety of solvents, and many of which are considered harsh and or flammable. And efficiencies can be gained to reduce the amount of solvent used, which of course helps uh, sustainability. And there's currently a research underway that we're aware of to innovate and implement new chemicals that are less impactful to the operators, the equipment, and the environment. And lastly, you know, developing robust processes that generate higher yields and fewer failures during synthesis will greatly improve the finished product solvents consumed ratio. Basically, process efficiency equals sustainability. Right. So what needs to be done to continue improving on the equipment then used for oligo development? Well, as new drugs become approved and you know, greater quantities of API are needed to meet demand, the focus is going to be on larger scale production. Next generation equipment needs to be highly reliable, easy to maintain, compatible with the process and simple to clean. Systems that reduce the use of flushing agents, capping elements, and amidites will increase yields and reduce waste. And finally, you know, the equipment of tomorrow needs to integrate into the smart factory of the future through seamless compatibility with existing plant-wide controls. So in addition then to the machinery, you mentioned automation software. Why specifically is that important? What innovations do you feel need to be made here? 
Yeah, so you know, I'm sure that you've heard about ISPE's Pharma 4.0, which is essentially is the focus on automating processes, thereby, you know, reducing human interventions through the use of software to collect data in real time and make changes to the process underway or in future runs. If machine learning can occur, greater control, smarter decisions, and enhanced outcomes are likely to follow. We're striving to simplify our automation by developing in intuitive and easy to use human machine interfaces. Automation really shouldn't be something that requires months or years to gain expertise on its application. At, at AKBA, we live by the mantra, an HMI is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not very good. Got it, I like that. Um, obviously, as we know, efficiency is important across all pharmaceutical development, um, but what specifically can drive greater efficiencies in oligo development? So we've already talked about, you know, a few areas that can make a difference, um, but automation improvements that capture performance data and, and predict maintenance needs are going to assure the highest level of up to, uh, uptime, and they're on the horizon already. We're also seeing companies adopt automated buffer formulation systems to reduce the need for tank farms and simplify buffer management in the purification phase of the process. And uh, finally, you know, optimizing the, the synthesis columns allows for this seamless scale up. And you know, when they're designed properly, they improve coupling efficiencies and reduce solvent usage considerably. Thank you. Um, we've uh, we have reached the end of our our questions, Chris. Do you have any final thoughts, comments on the the trends where you see the future going? Perhaps. Absolutely. I mean, I think like monoclonal antibodies, oligos are poised to grow exponentially, and this modality offers unique approaches to a variety of indications that currently really aren't well addressed by biologics or traditional pharmaceuticals. So at the personal level, this is good for all of us to help us live longer, more productive and better lives. And on the professional level, we at AKBA are planning and building for a future of leadership in this very dynamic and growing space. Fantastic. It's a great, uh, a great comment to finish on. Um, thanks again for your time today, Chris. That's been really, really insightful. I'm sure our, our audience are going to find that invaluable. Um, again, everybody, thank you very much for joining uh, another edition of Tides TV and hope to see you at some of our events in the future, Chris. Not long until for Tides US. We will be there. Looking forward to meeting with you and meeting with our customers. Thanks again for the opportunity to spend a few moments with you. And I really enjoyed it and uh, look forward to seeing you in Boston soon.